If you like Apple products or you're simply a proper tech head who delights in everything and anything cool and novel, then the minute that big ball drops on New Year, you start thinking about just which products exactly Apple is getting ready to drop in the new year. Some things we can all but take for granted. New operating systems at WWDC in June. New iPhones in September. Other things like new Macs and iPads and events in March and October. Well, those are always just a little bit less certain. 2018 was a huge year for Apple where almost everything got updated. Almost. But it was also a huge challenge with some updates delayed and some products just MIA. So what does Apple have coming in 2019? The best indicator of future behavior remains past behavior. So let's look at the patterns and see what they show us. Welcome back. Thanks for being here. I'm Rene Ritchie and this is Vector. No more Apple at Macworld eventually meant no more Macworld and no more January keynotes like the original iPhone or MacBook Air, not even Apple only events like the original iPad. And of course, Apple never goes to CES, the massive consumer electronics show that kicks off the new year. But Apple's partners do go to CES and do show off all the new HomeKit and HealthKit accessories and CarPlay implementations and breaking, as of right now, AirPlay 2 support and even HomeKit from a bunch of television manufacturers. Apple has hosted March events in 2011, 2012, 2015, 2016, and 2018. That's five out of the last eight years. Dates for those events have been all over the place, from as early as March 2nd to as late as March 27th. But in those years, we've seen new iPads, new Apple TVs, the launch of Apple Watch, the debut of the 12-inch MacBook, the 9.7-inch iPad Pro, the iPhone SE, and last year, the least expensive 9.7-inch iPad ever with Apple Pencil support. This year, we could see another everything old is new again iPad with the first iPad mini update since September of 2015. If it follows a 9.7 inch trend with a non-laminated screen and pencil support, it could also be the newest, best, low cost entry level iPad ever. Speaking of which, even if Apple's margins are down from the heights of the Steve Jobs era, the perception is such that they're getting hammered on pricing, especially outside the US where everything from currency conversion to VAT to tariffs just makes the prices astronomical. Astronomical. Given all that, a new, small, less expensive iPhone SE, first rumored to be on the way and then rumored to have been shelled, could be dusted off again. Maybe not for March, but maybe sometime sooner rather than later. I did a video on how that could play out last month, so I'll link that in the description below. AirPower, which didn't make Apple's self-imposed 2018 launch window, if not abandoned, could be back on track for the spring, along with a capacitive charging case for AirPods, and maybe even updated AirPods. I did a whole video on those last week, so check out the link for that in the description below. There have also been rumors of over-the-ear AirPods this year as well. If they're ready in March, Apple could fold all the audio stuff together, maybe even with some new HomePod kit. If not, we may have to wait until later in the year. For the last few years, spring has also meant a new spring collection for Apple Watch with new band, colors, and other Apple accessories like iPhone cases to match. In 2017, we also got the Product Red iPhone 7 in March, though it took until April of last year to get the Product Red iPhone 8. There's already a Product Red iPhone 10R, but if Apple could nail the PVD coating for the stainless steel, a Product Red iPhone 10S would be pure spring fire. June means WWDC, Apple's yearly worldwide developers conference, held for the last couple of years in San Jose, California. It's been held the first or second week of the month for more than a decade, so never say never, but if all else fails, it's close to a sure thing that that's when Apple execs absolutely have to put Sneaker on stage. Often but not always a software-only affair, for the last few years, it's been where we've met new versions of all of Apple's operating systems. This year, iOS lucky number 13 is rumored to be bringing the big springboard redesign that was pushed back from last year to make room for all the performance improvements in iOS 12. Springboard is the launcher and window manager for iPhone an iPad, and while the architecture has evolved considerably over the last decade, the core concept and presentation layer has not. So it'll be interesting to see if at all this year that finally changes. We'll also get tvOS 13, where hopefully Apple continues to smooth out and refine the currently kind of quirky and nowhere nearly international enough TV app situation, and watchOS 6. No rumors there yet, but always on time and independence from iPhone are always tops of my list. Hey, it took until iOS 5 for iPhone to ditch iTunes, Tether, and the watch is way more constrained, so 
baby steps. Apple has already said macOS 10.15 is where Marzipan, the system that enables UIKit or iOS apps on the Mac, will be going into developer beta. Yeah, that'll bend some preconceptions and blow some brains. And if Yosemite zoomed to El Capitan and Sierra to High Sierra, what could Mojave zoom to? Joshua Tree, Death Valley, Sequoia, Sonoma, Ventura? We'll have to wait and see. And hey, if I could get my wish, we could see the first or next steps towards Siri OS as well. And yeah, I'm just gonna keep mentioning that until I get my damn Syracuse SE Swift moment, cool? At some point, Apple's also gonna have to take the wraps off its new subscription services, both the texture-based magazine and newspaper services that's reportedly gonna be bundled into the news app and all the new original television programming that Apple has reportedly spent billions on. Given the saturationing or whatever you wanna call the maturing of the smartphone market, Apple's emphasis on services has also gotten everyone dreaming of what could be a mirror to Amazon Prime, a single Apple subscription service to rule them all with music, magazine, news, videos, and maybe even iCloud storage, Apple Care Plus, and iPhone upgrade programs all rolled into one. Yeah, <laughs> expect that when you see it. Which brings us to the long teased new modular Mac Pro and Pro Display. Apple is supposedly targeting 2019 for them. Sure, after air power and other delays in recent years, it's better for Apple to simply shut up and ship. But both the 2013 Mac Pro and the 2017 iMac Pro were first shown off to developers at WWDC. And if the Mac Pro and Pro Display are even the least bit on track, it's the best stage in the world for them to be shown off as well. And of course, if Apple has any intention of ditching Intel and moving any of the Macs to custom ARM-based processors like iOS devices used anytime soon, and they need to give developers the heads up, WWDC is the absolute best time to do that as well. I did a video on how all of that could play out last month, so I'll also link that in the description below. September, at least for the last seven years, has meant an iPhone event. Of course, that used to be an iPod stage, so anything can and will change, but unless and until it does, the second Tuesday in September, or thereabouts, remains the surest keynote in personal technology. We've only gotten a few rumors so far, and some of them have been absolutely cockamamie, as you'd expect, but a new A13 processor, a new AR camera, and some form of design tweak, be it notch minimization or color finish, are typically safe bets. Will there be a new Max and a new regular? Will there be a 10RS? Hey, that sounds just as much like a race car. And will Apple stop testing the upper elasticity of iPhone pricing and start testing the volume potential of returning to previous level pricing? We'll have to wait and see. As long as Apple Watch remains shuttlecraft to Starship iPhone, we'll likely get Series 5 to go along with it. It'll be interesting to see if there, Apple chooses to double down on battery life or on those persistent time and greater independence features I mentioned earlier. And if we haven't seen a flood of additional international ECG apps by then, well, a flood would be a nice thing to see roundabout then. Apple has held October events in 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2016, and 2018. That's six out of the last eight years. Dates for those have also been all over the place, from the 4th to the 30th. At those events, we've seen iPhone 4S, iPad 4, iPad mini, new Retina Macs, iPads Air, 5K iMacs, Touch Bar MacBooks Pro, and last year, the newly redesigned iPads Pro, Mac mini, and MacBook Air. Apple has been on more of an 18-month rather than 12-month update cycle for iPad Pro, but if we haven't seen updated Macs by October, it seems pretty sure we'll have to see them by then. The bigger question is, what will we see? Touch ID shipped on the iPhone 5S and we still haven't seen it on the 12 inch MacBook or the Apple Bluetooth keyboard. Face ID is just a year old, but wow, do I already want it on the Mac, even if it takes a bionic class ARM chip to do it. Will 2019 be the year that we get completely redesigned iMacs and MacBook Pros without the bezels and hey, without the butterfly keyboards. I know I'd love that. Now, these aren't full on predictions. I'll make separate videos with all of those for all of these as the year goes on. This is more of a Battlestar style, it happened before, it'll happen again, passed as predicate postulations. Of course, I didn't use any machine learning or AI to come up with them, but if you want to, and if watching this video just isn't enough for you, you can spur yourself on daily with Brilliant. Brilliant lets you get started each day, every day, by solving real problems, using real concepts and applying them. And if you like the daily problem, then there's more like it in the quiz on the left, so that you can explore the concepts in much greater detail and develop your framework. These thought-provoking challenges will lead you from curiosity to mastery, one day at a time. So what are you waiting for? Go to brilliant.org slash vector and get smarter and closer to your goals every day. Thanks Brilliant, and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. 
2018 was a big year for Apple. They updated almost every product, including the Mac Mini and MacBook Air, which hadn't seen updates in years, and introduced new products like the iPhone XS Max and the iPhone XR. And then there were all the iWork and Final Cut Pro 10 and Logic Pro 10 and Clips and other app and software updates along the way. But almost isn't all. No new iPhone SE, no new iPad Mini, no new non-touch bar MacBook Pro, and no new 12-inch MacBook, no new iMac, and no Air Power at all. If this year is anything like last year though, a lot of those gaps could be filled and some new and interesting products like the over-the-ear AirPods could be added to the lineup as well. So what is it you most wanna see? And what is it you absolutely do not wanna see from Apple in 2019? Hit like, hit subscribe, it really helps out the channel, and then hit up the comments below and let me know. And thank you so much for watching.